Hornbill Special World Cup preview and to dating thing na pe kun ha thagin chi bai tu ni na ikya nga chinglen sana ongkel thia ma hi le tu e FC Goa anaki mola hi Himale season thaki pat hun changa bang club join dia chi sai ka ni law ma hi mane na ma tu ni na ikya nga ongkel thia man na ki pa hoi ya hoi lo na ya ya tu pa ma it hi chat sa bang na commentator ba na ball coach bang leng na hi hi na wa ma Thank you, Sana, for being with us here today. So let's have a quick recap of yesterday's opening match between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Uh, what do you think this Russia wins 5-0 to Saudi Arabia is beyond expectation? Uh, Russia as a host team, people expected them to win, but not as huge as they did. So it was a good game, but then they converted the chances. And Saudi Arabia got a few chances, but they did not convert. So, in that way, it's football. You know, whenever you get the chances, you have to take take it. And Russia did, and they scored some brilliant goals, some individual brilliance as well. So that's how they won the game 5-0, quite convincingly. Yeah, yeah. Man, how do you think about this opening match? Well, I think looking at the history of World Cup, this is one of the biggest victory in the opening match. And this is good for the game. Like you know, when Russia is hosting this match. There is so much negative publicity about Russia, Vladimir Putin, and all his politics, and also in the sporting arena, there is so much of, you know, uh, Russia with drug scandals. They are most of the medal winners are, you know, they are taken to drugs. So Russia need this World Cup a huge success, and it was a, a mass, massive start for Russia. I think the host team are in big advantage because in this group. Such a big margin victory is very crucial, especially when Russia is going to find a place for, let's say, Saudi Arabia and Egypt. This is really, really a moral boosting, and this is the first time in in the history of World Cup they are winning a match. I think after mm. 20 years. Yes, yes. So, uh, this World Cup, who do you? Uh, what, who's your favorite country? Uh, for me, Brazil. It has been right from my childhood in 2002 when uh, Ronaldo, you know, the Brazilian Ronaldo played like Cafu, like uh, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, many of them to mention. That team was one of the best teams for me. I was really small at that time. I was maybe just seven, eight years old. But then that's the time when I started, you know, loving football and Brazil was a team. And even now, I support Brazil and they have a great team always, every year. They're the biggest contender, they're the favorites every year, whenever they're in the World Cup. Uh, so with Neymar, with Coutinho, with Firmino, with Thiago Silva, all the team, the players are really amazing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and I'm supporting Brazil. So, Mr. Sonar, I'm going to tell here that you are... Yeah, if the right team is going to win and Messi is going to be, uh, I mean, Neymar is going to be the top scorer. <laughs> I hope eventually, but then with the player like Ronaldo and Messi and even uh, uh, Salah, you know, they're in their top form. So you can't miss out on Salah this season, what he has had for Liverpool, but that's for the club. Let's see what he does for the country, but let's not forget he scored the penalty and qualified it them to the World Cup. So, you know, it's very interesting to see and let's see who finishes at the top. Well, looking at the club level, these three players they have mentioned, Mo Salah, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, they are playing for the best team. Liverpool has been sensational and let's not forget about Mo Salah scoring the winning goal for the skin last match against Congo and the commentators were crying, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, yeah. You know? So the whole of the team is almost worshipping, yeah. almost worshipping him as God. But yeah. Let's not forget that he is just back from injury in the yeah. Champions League final with tackle from Ramos. Right. And let's talk about Ronaldo. Ronaldo doesn't he's not going to have as much support he get in Real Madrid the same is with Lionel Messi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think when we are looking at these top four players, including Neymar, do you think that Neymar has a big advantage to compare with others? Because he has some some individual brilliance right. even in the friendly matches. Right, I agree. With the team that Brazil is, as I said, with uh, Coutinho, with Firmino, with him, you know, playing and Williams, you know, mm -hmm. and Fernandinho. So these are the great players that he's going to play with, and they are all top performers for the uh, for the club. So we can only look forward to the cup, and it's really exciting with Germany, with Spain, with uh, you know France. You know, they are all very good teams. So you can't pick a favorite actually, but mine is Brazil, just because you know that's how I started off, and that's the team that I support, you know. So yeah, let's see who finishes at the top, as I said. Looking at the day about Brazil squad, 
he has we have so much of talent in this squad and there are some teams like Belgium, France, they are so embarrassingly talented and the coaches are having a luxury of headache for which player to choose. Yeah. So when we, when we talk about the chances for Neymar to score, he's going to get lots of support from Coutinho. We, we know even those players in the benches, they can be a game changer any time. Yeah, I agree. So not only Neymar, even there are so many potential players who can be among top scorers. Yeah. One of them, I do believe, is Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, I agree. Right. I agree. Yeah. Totally. player from Manchester City. Yeah. He's a good I agree. So let's focus about the match for tonight. Yeah. The first match is going to be very exciting, as we have said. Yeah. Egypt are going to take an Uruguay. Let's not forget Uruguay is two-time champion in the World Cup. Yeah. And this almost like, you know, for Egypt, after 20 years, they are true to the World Cup. And so do you think Egypt has got a chance to top this group or to be among the best two teams to qualify for the next round? Egypt is a good team, of course, no doubt about it. But uh, having said that, you know, that they're playing against Suarez, against Uruguay side, with Cavani, with... Uh, you know, many brilliant players to mention, but uh, I would say Suarez is the world best number nine, I would say at the moment, and he scores a goal, he makes up for the team, and he makes the ground, he runs a lot as well, so I think uh, Suarez can do well against them today, Cavani as well, so Egypt, uh, I'm not too sure, I'm on Uruguay today. Okay. But let's not forget tonight. The combination of Suarez and Uruguay, they are scoring more than 70 goals in all competition last season. When you are going to defend this kind of players who can any day win the game by themselves. Right. So everyone is talking and thinking that Uruguay is the favorite. Yeah. But let's not forget about Izzy. Mo Salah is not the only player whom Izzy is depending on. They right. have few good players who are playing in English right. Premier League top, play, right. top teams. And also looking at your qualification, the group they are coming on, it's not an easy team. So do you think it's going to be a high scoring goal or will it be a very tight, close call? What kind of game are we expecting tonight? I here? think it's going to be a close game because uh, it's not going to be very open because they're both very strong defensively. Hmm. With Godin at the back, you know, he has played for Atletico Madrid for many years and he's very experienced and a very good defender. Hmm. So they are very strong uh, defensive side, Uruguay, as well as uh, Egypt, you know. They have uh, quite many players uh, in their ranks who are playing Europe top teams, you know, as you said. So it's going to be an exciting game and it's a World Cup, so they don't want to lose, so they don't want to concede. You know, so they're going to play safe, but uh, with the kind of strike force that uh, Uruguay possesses, I think they're going to score some goals and they're going to win tonight. Okay, yeah. let's, uh, let's have some prediction, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, how many goals do you think? Uh, I think Uruguay 2-0. 2-0. So you are right, writing off Mo Salah, huh? Yeah, because uh, he's not 100% as yet and he's just back from injury. So it also depends whether he starts today or he doesn't start. Um, it's an interesting thing to see. So let's see. According to the team news, the coach is telling he's 100% fit to start. But do you think it is a risk for the coach to take a player who is just not having any single game just before the, any friendly or during the training? Do you think see, it's a big risk for, for, a, for a player of uh, Mohamed Salah's caliber? Uh, he has played a lot of league games, he has been the top scorer and the confidence level is really high and he's really motivated and he's representing the country you know, at the top level, that's a World Cup. So he'll be very excited as well and you know, having said that he has not played any match after the Champions League final after the injury, uh, maybe that's even a plus point for him because he has rest well and he's fresh you know, for the cup, that also can be a plus point. Well, when we are looking at the picture for tonight, everyone is so excited about Spain versus Portugal. But yeah. there is still one more match that's going to come up. That is Morocco versus Iran. Do you think these two are outsiders for this World Cup? Or no, not at all. Because they are going they're, to be they're for their spot. Yeah, Iran is the SS top contenders. They are the heavyweights. And, you know, uh, and Morocco as well. They have many players playing abroad like in top European teams, some players playing for Real Madrid, some for, you know, in this Premier League. So it's really going to be interesting. They're here in the World Cup for a reason. They've done well and they're top teams in the world. That's why they're in the World Cup, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a good game. I never write it off. Uh, but in the group, the favourites are Spain and Portugal. So the game that Spain and Portugal, it's going to be a crucial one because who wins is most likely to be the you know, group leaders, but nothing can be said. This is football. Anybody can beat anyone. Big upsets can be happen. Let's not forget that Morocco come into this strong competition during the qualifi qualifying round. They are the only team who doesn't concede. That's going to tell how balanced is this team, especially when it comes to defending. 
And on the other side, Iran too is one of the most defensive side. And let's not forget the other top team to qualify. The first top team to qualify is just after Russia and Brazil. Yeah. So this is going to be the fifth time. Do you think the ASEAN side will be trust like we have seen Saudi Arabia last night? I don't think so. As you said, they are both very strong defensive side. And yeah, the Iranian as well as the uh, Moroccans, you know, they are very strong physically as well. So it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good match. Every match in the World Cup is very crucial and very interesting. They have their own statistics, own game plans. So let the best team win, I would say. But uh, we can't write it off. We can't say like somebody's going to get trash, somebody's going to get that. It can be anywhere around, you know, it can be big upsets. We never know. Let's talk about the squad then. Ellis Morocco has some of the, the top players playing European top like Juventus, Benaita is there and they have Bentakur is there. But the problem that I have with Iran side is most of their top players are playing Arab League. So do you think that, is the, that was the problem that Saudi Arabia had last night when they were facing against Russia? Do you think that same thing is going to happen because these ASEAN teams are so much way behind in terms of quality to compare with Europeans? That's not going to be much of a difference, I would say, because, uh, you know, wherever league, whichever league you play in, uh, the league has a standard and the players have qualified for the World Cup. So you can't blame on the league, you know, which league they are playing and because the players have done well to qualify first at the first place. And after getting qualified, playing in the World Cup, it's a moral booster, in fact. So it's a football, as I said, you know, not anything can happen. Any player can turn up. We don't know a few players now, but we'll know. For example, like in 2014 edition when uh, James Rodriguez did very well, you know, for Colombo. So he, he was not known to us really, but then after that World Cup, he has, was signed with Real Madrid and he has done well and everybody knows about him. So World Cup is a stage where unknown people, unknown players can be known, can come up, you know, can... Yeah, that's what it is. Let's try to see the big picture of Group B. Mm. Beside Morocco and Iran, we have Portugal and Spain. Yeah, that's interesting. Looking at the lineup, at least on the paper, it seems it's going to be a shootout between Portugal and Spain. Do you think these two, any of these two teams, Morocco versus Iran, they can be a whipping boys like the surprise package, trying trying to show some surprising result? Do you think they have any cap capacity to do that here in this World Cup, this edition at Russia? Most probably, you know, as I said, the match today is very important between Spain and Portugal, you know, uh, let's see who wins them because they are both uh, needing to win it because they want to be the group toppers, so whom they face, you know, on the next round up in the round of 16. So it's going to be very interesting, uh, but tonight with uh, Spain and Portugal, I would rather go with uh, Spain to be honest, but Ronaldo is one of my favorite players, I would say. Uh, so. Maybe whoever wins, let the best team win. My team is Brazil, so it doesn't matter. But I'm here to, uh, to enjoy the game tonight, learn as much as I can, watch the game properly with friends, and let's look forward to it. I want to ask Olian this question. Okay. Spain versus Portugal, which side of the two teams you are going to support? Who do you think is going to win? going for Portugal. You are going for Portugal? Yeah. Why? Because you like Ronaldo? I like yeah, Ronaldo. <clears throat> Okay, what's the prediction? Nice, what's the prediction? What's the score you think is gonna be? Okay, a prediction like uh, maybe two one. I think two one. Two one. Yeah. Ronaldo scoring. Yeah. Two one. Ronaldo That's one. your yeah. prediction. So, what is which side do you think will win tonight, Mr. Sana? I uh, there will be goals definitely with the kind of players that they have both the teams. There will be goals for sure. Uh, with Ronaldo, I think Portugal will score two, and. Spain also will score, but uh, I'm not sure how many, but uh, I'll go for one because I want Portugal to win. Uh, honestly, yeah. So 2 1. I beg to disagree with these two gentlemen here with me. Let's talk about Portugal versus Spain. Spain, when the World Cup is just about to kick off, they have got all the wrong news coming in because Julian Lopetegu, only a few days before the start of the World Cup, he has been saying. Do you think that is justified as a football professional footballer? Uh, what is your take on this issue? For me as a player, if I was part of the team, I would rather know, I, like, I would not know how to react on it because our coach, our gaffer was, you know, with us for a long time. We have a training session, we have plans, we have this, that, everything. And on the day of the World Cup is going to start, the coach is being sacked. So that's really, uh, I don't know how to react on that situation, you know, if I was a player playing in that team. But uh, yeah, the players in the Spain national team has quite some mature players, experienced players who can handle situations, you know. So 
with Ramos, PK, and everyone out there, you know, they're very experienced players, they're world best players. So they will, of course, react well. But let's see who comes in, what system they play, is there any changes, you know, that's, of course, another thing that we need to watch tonight. That's very interesting. I want to ask you the next question. This brings us into this question. How much is going to be affected psychologically the players? Number one, I want to tell you, when you're going to a big stage like World Cup, you have played friendly matches, you have come with a mindset that yeah. who are you going to use and what technique. Right. All that coming to dust. Now, Fernando Hero, the next coach is coming. Do you think this puts Spain in a very complicated issue or you think Spain has so much quality this is not going to disturb them? Yeah, we can rather say it can be a positive thing or it can be a negative thing, you know. Mm -hmm. If the team does bad, the people to be blamed. If the things goes well, then the people to be praised. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the results, it depends on the, how they do, you know, from now on. Mm -hmm. Because it was important for Spain to know that, you know, our coach is our coach. Not like, you know, he's gonna, after the World Cup, he's gonna go with Real Madrid, he's gonna be the coach. Because he's involved, he's committed with two teams at a time. That's not possible because when you're coaching for your country, you have to be at your best. You have to be only focused for the, for the betterment of the country when you're representing in the World Cup. So having said that, uh, it can be either a positive or a negative, but uh, with the results, that's very important. Let's talk about technique. Portugal are going to come in as the champion of, defending champion of Euro. Yeah. But Spain, they were very, they were disappointing in the last edition of the World Cup. They come as defending champion, they couldn't go through the knockout stage. But that has changed already down through the, down through the years. Because they have got resurrection and new inspiration in the courts of Julian Lopetegu. Right. And they have some of the best youngsters who started to bring new blood into the team. Yeah. Like Asensio, Isco. Yeah. Let's talk about the of the squad. Which of the two teams do you think have better squad? When we talk about Portugal, it's about Cristiano Ronaldo, Pepe, Quaresma. Right. So not um, very star -studded. Portugal are not very star -studded, but they perform as a team, which is a very good thing to watch, you know. And Ronaldo is the leader up front, scoring goals, always delivering whenever he's required. So he steps up to win trophies for them as well. He could not be part of the Euro final due to injury, but he was there on the sideline supporting the team. That shows his character, his belief in the team, you know and his weight and value in the team as well. So that's a very important thing. And also, when you say about Spain, when you don't take Fabregas and, you know, Morata to the World Cup squad, then you should know, like, you know, what are they doing? Because they are one of the best players in the world, even Fabregas, you know. They are, Fabregas was part of the World Cup winning team for Spain as well. So he's been one of the best midfielders in the world, people know. So if they are not part of the team, you know, the depth and the, you know, the quality in the team that, Spain poses, you know, so it's going to be interesting game, as I said, with, with different kind of uh, technique, different kind of thing, with the new courts coming in, whether they continue or whether they change, it's going to be interesting, really. So what's your prediction, Ulian? Let's start with you again. What's your prediction? You have already predicted, right? Yeah. You're going in favor of? Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. And you're also Portugal? Same with Portugal, 2-1. But if there is any Spanish fans, I am here, I'm predicting it's going to go in favor of Spain, I'll go for 2-1 in favor of Spain. Okay. okay. So let's talk about the last thing. Who is the most likely goal scorer to be here? Will it be Ronaldo or will it be Diego Costa? Or is the goal going to come from anywhere in the midfield from the Spanish side or bottom two teams? Uh, I would say Ronaldo from for Portugal mm -hmm. and from the Spain side it can be either Isco or Asensio or let's see, depending. But I have some doubt about Ronaldo scoring because out of the 73 goals he has scored for his country, only three are coming to the World Cup. But this time he's already 34. This is going to be the last hurrah for him. He must be really hungry. Let's see. He's how hungry, he's motivated. And <laughs> let's hopefully. Let's he see. He is not frustrating Ramos yeah. to make him get red card, or let's see the Spanish are playing Kitaka and. You know, Pepe is also another red card master. <laughs> yeah. So I do believe that players are not emotional and being carried away. So with this, we have come to the end of our program. Thank you so much, Jinglen. Yeah. And thank you so much, Ulian. We, viewers, we hope to come see you again for the next edition. We'll keep coming on your home screen to do a workup preview as a special program for home new special workup. Thank you for watching this. If you like it, you can share it and also you can subscribe as well if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you once again. This is Mang and Ulian Sana signing up for today.